Over the billions of years that there's been life on this planet, different creatures have been coming in and out of existence. Many countries on this planet used to be home to much larger, scarier creatures, and Earth is still home to creatures that have survived for hundreds of millions of years. Due to the changes we've made to this planet, the extinction rate has skyrocketed since the dominance of humans. We are losing some of the world's most iconic animals, but luckily some are able to hang on. Through conservation we have been able to save some species from the brink of extinction, and in some cases we have been able to release them back into the wild. In this video I will be focusing on some of these creatures, as I'll be going through 5 species that were reintroduced into their former ranges. And for our first species we'll be heading over to Tasmania, as we have the Eastern Quoll. Now there are 6 species of quoll alive today, 4 living in Australia and 2 being found in New Guinea. These creatures are carnivorous marsupials and feed on almost anything smaller than them. The Eastern Quoll is quite a unique creature, as each specimen can look completely different to the other. Some are a brownish colour with white spots, and others are a dark black with white spots. These two creatures are both the same species, but just like with jaguars, these mammals have a common black colour morph. In the wild these creatures can be found in a wide range of habitats, but tends to prefer dry grassland, and they also show a preference for agricultural land. During the day they normally sleep in their dens, but when night falls they come out to hunt. They generally feed on insects, small mammals and birds, and on this diet they can reach a maximum size of around 65 centimetres. This is around the same size as a domesticated cat, and they hunt in a very very similar way. The eastern quoll was once found across much of southeastern Australia and was part of the landscape for millions of years. However, this all came to an end in 1963 when the last eastern quoll was thought to be shot in the Australian mainland. Their numbers had been in decline decades before this, and the reason is pretty much all down to the European settlers. The settlers brought with them feral cats, foxes and dogs, and also hunted and trapped these quolls. One of their last remaining strongholds was on the island of Tasmania, but in recent years they have been reintroduced. In 2018 and 2019, 60 captive bred eastern quolls were reintroduced into the Australian mainland, and they have been monitored ever since. So far these reintroductions have been successful, but only time will tell if they're back in mainland Australia for good. If you want to help out these cute little marsupials, I've left a donation link in the description below, and hopefully with your help they'll be able to take over Australia once again. But for our next species we'll be heading over to Europe, as we have the smooth snake. Although this snake may be more than happy to bite you, it is a non-venomous species species, and is usually found across Europe and northern Iran. In the wild they tend to be found around rocky areas, or open areas with sparse vegetation. In these areas they're known to feed on small mammals, but show a preference for smaller reptiles. This snake's dull coloration helps it to blend in with its environment, and as it can be found in some colder parts of the world, they are known to hibernate over large parts of the year. This species is by no means threatened with extinction, as they're currently listed as least concern. This is because they have a relatively large population globally, but their numbers are dwindling in the UK. In the UK they're normally only found in heathland and moorland, and along with the adder and the grass snake, they're one of only three species of snake that can be found in the whole of the UK, and along with the sand lizard, they are one of the rarest reptiles in the UK. These two species thrive in the same habitat, and unfortunately this habitat is shrinking. Agricultural expansion and uncontrolled fires are just some of the reasons behind their decline, and they are often purposely killed as people confuse them with venomous adders. Because of the loss of their habitat, they are only found over small areas of the UK today, but after a 50 year absence, they were reintroduced back into Devon in 2010. So far this reintroduction has been successful, and after a few hot summers, their numbers have started to increase. So although they're not the most eye catching snake in the world, they are making a comeback in the UK. But for our next species we'll be heading over to Hawaii, as we have the Hawaiian goose. Now this bird is endemic to the Hawaiian islands, but was once almost wiped out for good. You may notice that this bird looks a lot like the Canadian goose, and that's because they're actually related. It's thought that some Canadian geese may have migrated over to the Hawaiian Islands 500,000 years ago and decided to call it home. Over this time they have evolved to have some different adaptations, such as less webbing around their feet and a slightly smaller size. This bird is also known by the name of Nene, as this is said to mimic the bird's soft song. They are found in various different habitats across Hawaii, but tend to prefer grasslands and lava plains. In these areas they are of course herbivorous, and browse on many different species of plants. Although this bird was once quite common across Hawaii, today they are the rarest goose in the world. They are thought to only be around 2,500 birds in the wild, which also makes them the sixth most endangered waterfowl species. Their downfall was once again all due to humans, because as I've covered many times on this channel before, Hawaii has a big problem with invasive species. Mongooses 
pigs and cats were all known to feed on them, and they were also hunted by settlers. At one point, their situation was so dire that an English conservationist named Peter Scott brought some of these birds back to the UK to Slimbridge Wetland Wildlife Centre. These birds were then bred in captivity, and since this time, some have been released back into Hawaii. Through other captive breeding programs, their numbers have started to rise, and hopefully if the invasive species are kept in check, this bird's numbers will multiply even further. But for our next species, we'll be heading back over to Tasmania, as we have the Tasmanian Devil. Now, the Tasmanian Devil is the largest carnivorous marsupial, but as I'm sure many of you know, this wasn't always the case. They are closely related to the previously mentioned quolls, but they were also related to the iconic thylacine. Although the most famous Tasmanian Devil was a cartoon, these creatures are very interesting in their own right. They are characterised by their stocky, muscular build, and are known for being quite smelly and very loud. They can often be heard letting out a loud screech and tend to get very ferocious when feeding. They are efficient hunters of small mammals, but a large part of their diet comes from scavenging on carrion. They are known to eat almost every part of a carcass, and they are even able to crush bone. It has the strongest bite for its size out of any mammal in the world, and you definitely wouldn't want to get bitten by one. Unfortunately today, the Tasmanian Devil is listed as endangered. Despite its name, it used to be found over large parts of mainland Australia, but their numbers have been decreasing for hundreds of years. Like with the quolls, they've had to deal with invasive species, but they've also had to deal with disease epidemics. The devil facial tumour disease has drastically reduced the population and now threatens the survival of the entire species. This is a form of transmissible cancer and tends to have a very high mortality rate. They are also not helped by their love of roadkill, as they are often killed by cars themselves after trying to feed on roadkill. Despite this rather tragic news, in recent years they have been reintroduced into the Australian mainland. 26 were released into Australia in 2020 and so far they looked be doing very well. This is the first time that they had been on the Australian mainland for 3,000 years, and hopefully with a little more care, their numbers will increase in the coming years. But for our final species, we'll be heading back over to Europe, as we have the European hamster. Now hamsters are probably best well known as pets, but they are in fact wild animals. They were once found over large areas of Eurasia, showing a preference for farmland and open grasslands. In these areas they are omnivores, and feed on a variety of seeds, insects, root vegetables and grasses. They famously have the the ability to store food in their elastic cheek pouches, and they then store this food underground. As these creatures are relatively small, they are the perfect size prey for many predators in the area, and as they feed on crops, they are also not popular with farmers. These threats, along with a decrease in their natural habitat, have led to the European hamster being listed as critically endangered. Because of the worrying state of this hamster's numbers, drastic action was taken. The Court of Justice of the European Union found that France had failed to protect the European hamster. This this meant that the government would be subject to fines of around $24 million if France did not adjust its agricultural and urbanisation policies. Because of this, France started a captive breeding programme in 2014, which aimed to release around 500 European hamsters each year. There have been further reintroductions in other parts of Europe, and hopefully for the European hamster, it isn't too little too late. But that's about it for this video. If you know of any other animals that can make it onto this list, then let me know down in the comments below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.